From my perspective, I've analyzed this Tenpai deck and found a meticulous strategy that masterfully balances ferocious OTK potential with unwavering resilience against disruption. Crafted with precision, the 49 card build incorporates 21 go second tools designed to dismantle even the strongest boards, complemented by 23 one card OTK starters, with Tenpai Dragon Chundra leading as the relentless linchpin of Synchro Supremacy. Through rigorous testing, I've observed that even in the face of multiple hand traps, the strategy holds firm. Playing through four hand traps to summon Chundra in a single turn isn't mere chance, it's a calculated outcome. The deck's strength is further bolstered by an arsenal of kaijus and powerful spells such as Lightning Storm and Raigeki, ensuring no obstacle remains unchallenged. Defensive stalwarts like Underworld Goddess of the Closed World and Borilode Savage Dragon offer counterplay protection, pivoting seamlessly between offense and defense as needed. Despite the lurking presence of four garnets, strategic design bolstered by draw power and consistency engines minimizes their impact, safeguarding the flow of play. This build is constructed not just to compete, but to dominate breaking down opponents and seizing victory through explosive synchro plays. Diving deeper into the data, I evaluated the numbers. The deck's readiness to go second was put under the lens of hypergeometric distribution, revealing a 97.31% probability of drawing one of the 21 go second cards, an arsenal capable of board-breaking precision. With 23 starters, the probability of having one in the opening hand stands at an impressive 98.35% ensuring that synchro plays are set in motion consistently. Combining these insights, the probability of drawing an optimal six-card hand when going second is approximately 89.19%. This deck, then, isn't a simple concept, but a calculated and optimized force built to withstand the rigors of high-level play. Each draw is not just a stroke of luck, it is a testament to strategic inevitability, designed to sweep opponents aside with precision and intent. All right, my boys, welcome back to another episode. I hope you guys enjoyed that AI presentation as it broke down the deck and told you guys what the master dual version and setup was. Primarily in this deck, you know, what I found to be most helpful. If we're going to run ritual level eights, we need to go big with the um, extra monsters in our deck. So the extra monsters that we're using are cards like Kaijus, um, because these cards are level eight and they work very well with the deck. Um, we're running Interrupting Kaiju Slumber. And if you think about it, with Interrupting Kaiju Slumber and the Kaijus in the deck, that gives you a destruction and a tribute removal, um, which is really good. And then also the bodies on the board become fodder for um, original sinful spoils and you can get your snake eye engine going and then you can also take the monster that you um basically uh summoned from interrupting kaiju slumber and place it in your spell trap zone um you know once you use the snake eye cards to bring this card out and then you can finish up with your chundra combo the whole idea in this deck um the way i built it you know i used ai to to build the deck but i used ai to build the deck around this one effect that says if you control a fire dragon so you can special summon this card from your hand so i looked at all the fire dragons and the best fire dragons in the game were ritual fire dragon which is lord of the red and a uh, effect fire dragon, which is Snake Eyes Flame Burst Dragon. So since we have an easy combo line of both, I put them in the deck and we're using it with Chundra. And um, basically this is the power. With 49 card uh, build, um, primarily it gives us access to all the cards and buries the garnets effectively. The AI had to explain that, but let's just hop into a few duels and check out uh, the rest of the video. All right, my boys, as planned, we're going second, but I open with the Flame Burst Dragon. Now, since we're playing against a, a trap card heavy deck, you know, something like Harpy's Feather Death and Lightning Storm would definitely come in handy. But what I also found is come in handy is having the ability to make multiple plays. Having the ability to make multiple plays just pretty much makes your opponent waste a lot of cards and effects on different cards. So we drew into Interrupting Kaiju Slumber. Perfect top deck for this deck, and you'll actually see it in in actual play. So Interrupting Kaiju Slumber, he chains a Trap Trick, a Holtea, basically to summon another card. But when that card is summoned, it'll be instantly destroyed, and he'll have two Kaijus. Now, if this was the Sinful Spoils thing, then it would basically summon out Sinful Spoils by tributing, but we got one for one. So we're going to go ahead one for one for Snake Eye Ash. We're going to do something disgusting here. We're going to use the effect 
to search our deck and grab Sinful Spoil Subversion. Now, I didn't have to grab Sinful Spoil Subversion. I could have did a lot of stuff, but for the sake of this replay, I, I figured I would do it. Because <laughs> I said, I'm cooking right now. I want to do this for the replay. So we use Subversion to put the Gamma Seal into our Spell Trap Zone. Then we use Ash Effect to send Gamma Seal to the grave to summon Flame Purse Dragon. <laughs> All right, here's another good one. This is my favorite one, actually, that I've played. <laughs> so my opponent sets two cards and passes. Looks like they probably bricked, but what they bricked on is very interesting. So we're going to lead with the Bell Star, the Black Witch, use the effect, and get Valor. Okay, it's totally fine. You know, we built the deck to play around Valor's Ash and Imperms, which is the reason why we used AI to build it. So we're going to use the original Sinful Spoil, send it away, and then he's going to chain with Max C. Totally fine. We're going to summon Snake Eye Ash. Then he's going to use the effect, and he's going to Imperm it. <laughs> Can't use Ash on this one, my boy. And then so that's going to get negated. But then we're going to use Sang and Summoning, and then we're going to use the effect to and add and special summon Tenpai Dragon Gin Ginryoku. Now, what's cool about this? Basically, if you noticed, he used Maxi, he used Valor, and he used Imperm, and he used that on pretty much um, three cards. So think about that. He used three cards, and I have not special summoned Chundra yet. So then we're gonna tribute it off, and then we're gonna bring out. Uh, Padra, and then he's going to imperm that. So look at that. That's four hand traps. That's four hand traps. That's four interactions he's used. And then we're going to go ahead and utilize our special summon, special summon children, or we could use Sang and Kaiman. But we also have Sang and Summoning on the field, which pre prevents the monsters from being affected by cards. But as you can see, all of these dances around Infirm, Infirm, Maxi, and Valor, we were able to get around for game. Now, the only thing that can stop us now is if he draws Nibiru, and he did not. So we went right into battle, and, you know. <laughs> All right, so we're starting out this new one going second, and our opponent didn't play anything, but we opened up with a bunch of reactionary hand traps and go second board breakers, which is totally fine. But since our opponent didn't play anything, that actually works against us. So we won't be able to OTK, but we can set up a decent board with Lord of the Red and Max C. So let's go ahead and do that. So first, we're going to use pre-preparation of rights to go ahead and add Red Eyes, Transmigration, and Lord of the Red. Pop the transmigration to send primal uh, being Nibiru to the graveyard. We're going to go ahead and ritual summon out the Lord of the Red. Now, the Lord of the Red is out with Max C in hand. That means if my opponent normal summons a card and that card doesn't have an effect or its effect says, like, activate this effect in the main phase or something, I could use Max C to pop that card because as soon as they normal summon, I could chain Max C's effect, which will activate Lord of the Red. So basically at this stage, you know, now that we have Lord of the Red on the field, um, we were able to get into Chundra through uh, through uh, Roku. Basically, this is game time. So attacking for 15, attacking for 17, and then we're going to take 24 for exactly game. And that's it for the Lord of the Red. <laughs> 